Hey, Vinyl Community Chat here doing a vinyl update. It's been a couple weeks. Um, got some cool stuff to show you. Really been enjoying everyone's videos. Um, specifically, uh, the Melbourne meetup with James Buttery and Chat Sound and Big Star. That was really cool. Uh, good to see Sonic Mainliner. Been very regular making videos lately. Really enjoyed those. Uh, Mr. Farpoy79. Really enjoyed his last video. So, um, yeah, things are really going well in the vinyl community. It's a lot of quality videos being made. So, um, just wanted to hop on here. Very inspiring. Makes me want to go out and buy a record. So, um, just wanted to get to it and show you some of the stuff that I picked up over the last couple of weeks since my last video. Um, playing in the background a new record from 2014. This is Bonnie Prince Billy's. Singer's Grave, A Sea of Tongues. This is on Drag City Records. This is from, I believe this was released last week. And um, just really, really love this album. Uh, this is sort of a stripped down sound for, there's the man himself. You can see that in his overalls. Uh, this is sort of a stripped down sound for Bonnie. Nothing um, really out of the ordinary as far as his sound goes but it's a really really good record it's it's his best record since 2009's beware in my opinion uh will oldham he's one of these guys that puts out a lot of material and um i think that's inherently suspect when any artist puts out a lot of material you just assume it's probably not all that good and a lot of times there's a lot of bad records or records you want to avoid um, and I think that's fair criticism of Bonnie Prince, the Bonnie Prince Billy catalog, but having said that, I think this is a really good one. I think really every four or five years he goes through a really creative spur where he's making good records. Um, 1997's I See a Darkness, 2003's Master and Everyone. Um, 2000, the late 2000's were a really good period for him. With, I really love the Light Down the Light record, the... Um, the Letting Go record and Beware and then here lately the last four or five years I really didn't like the Bonnie Prince Billy and the Cairo Gang which some of these same people play on this one the Emmett Kelly um, plays on this and it really works really well it's, a, it's basically um, yeah the same band as the Cairo Gang but uh, really really good stuff I think the thing that stands out the most to me is that the melodies the chord changes and the, and the lyrics Specifically, I don't like Bonnie Prince Billy when he's doing those really abrasive chord changes. He, to me, he works better with those more sugary, simple chord changes. And the thing that really stands out is the poetic lyrics. Um, really, really on top of his game as far as the lyrics go. I think this is his, maybe his most beautifully written lyrical album he's ever done. So um, I, I highly recommend this. This is worth checking out. Again, Gap puts out a lot of stuff. I certainly don't endorse it all, but this is a really good one. I forgot it was coming out, and uh, I saw it there at the record store and just decided to blind buy it, and I'm really glad it did. I had low hopes, and uh, it definitely exceeded them. So, anyway, moving on. Everyone's been showing this. Sonic Mainliner showed this. Um, Tony showed this. I'm just going to keep on rolling with it. This is, of course, the new Apex Twin. Syro on Warp Records. Um, again, everyone's shown this, so I won't go into a whole lot of details. The triple LP set, which Andreas correctly said is extremely annoying because the middle record is in the middle. It's really hard to get out. Um, I really like this record. Um, I was telling Andreas in his um, on his video, I really agree with like 99% of his review of this record, where it's um, definitely that 90s nostalgia type sound. Um, but with modern production techniques, I really, really, really like this record. I don't think it's a great, it's not the best Apex Twin record, but it, it didn't disappoint me. I've got to keep it real and be honest. It, it didn't disappoint me. Um, I thought the thing that really stood out to me was just the, that I've not heard anyone speak on that maybe I could add to the conversation with is the, um, the sheer musicianship as far as time signatures, as far as attention to detail, layering. Richard D. James, I mean, he really is a genius. And um, some of the time signatures 
on this are just insane and um, the synth tones everything it, it, it's a it's a really good record it's worth checking out um, if this was done by anyone other than Apex Twin it would probably be held as one of the greatest records of the year um, but it's a blessing and a curse having that name associated with it because it's uh, he has such amazing past work but it really didn't let me down I really liked it um, I think it's a very solid record it, di it didn't disappoint me uh, moving on the record that did disappoint me this is Alt J's new record this is called shit I don't even know what this thing is called I think this is called All This Is For You, and this is on Atlantic Records. Alt-J is a English indie pop electro folk band. This is their second LP after last year's An Awesome, or two years ago, I think they released a record called An Awesome Wave. Um, I actually don't even own An Awesome Wave, um, but I know everyone really liked them. I heard some tracks off of it. I just blind by this because I saw that it was a new record. I had some some money and couldn't find anything else and I know that a lot of people like this this band so I just took a chance on it this is a 2 LP set um, colored vinyl one is a blue the other I believe is orange um, again when I had heard of this band's last record I really liked a lot and uh, I had not heard anything off this and it was a, just a huge disappointment this is not very good at all um it's just really it's just a mess to the the intro starts off pretty strong it's an instrumental intro voice cent, uh centric in, instrumental that i really like but it was really all downhill from there nothing really memorable about this sort of a mess um short instrumentals that feel out of place i i can't really say a whole lot about it then it was just a disappointment and I would I would not recommend it sorry I bought it this is a fantastic record uh, VC favorite can this is the reissue soundtracks on uh, spoon records this is um, I'm not sure where this is at in the can discography if it's I'm assuming it's post you know Tago Mago I can't I can't remember I used to know but Basically, uh, music from soundtracks that Can did, uh, Deadlock, Cream, Bottom, Deep End, and a German word. Compilation from 1970, so I guess that's right right before Tago Mago, post-Monster movie. Um, there's the band. This is just great stuff. I'd actually never heard this. Really big fan, or I'd heard parts of it, string parts of it, and um, I knew it was going to be great, and it, it was even better than I thought it was going to be. Really, really great songs love the song mother sky from deep end great song uh, deadlock incredible um, these reissues I showed the monster movie reissue uh, in my other video these are done really well um, not a lot in terms of packaging if you're into that but as far as the sound quality uh, the records themselves really nice stuff um, I think they're, they're doing a great job reissuing these, and these are things that really need to be reissued because um, the reissues, previous reissues, still go for quite a bit of money. So and it's just great to have great music. So yeah, can soundtracks. Another recent reissue. This is Fella Ryan Samkuti and the Africa Kute and the Africa Seventy. This is Confusion. This is Afro beat jazz funk. Uh, this is from 1975 I want to say this is just great stuff um, sort of like a Funkadelic was playing a John Coltrane cover or something it's just insane stuff um, it was a blind buy for me I've never seen this show and I know it's gotten some this band has gotten some love in the VC but I've never actually seen anything shown they had a lot of these records re recently reissued and just went for it and I was really glad I did. I've spun this four or five times now. The musicianship is just incredible. Um, really good stuff. Looking forward to checking out some more stuff from this this band. Really good. Uh, a few more here. Blue Note reissue. Blue Note is reissuing all these uh, five vinyl records or four or five vinyl records every month as a celebration of their 75th anniversary. I'm picking some of them up uh, as I go along, this is Eric Dolphy's 
classic jazz LP out to lunch. Um, Freddie Hubbard, Bobby Hutcherson, Richard Davis, and Anthony Williams make it this band. This is class on avant-garde jazz. Just again with the time signatures, with the playing, with the um, attention to detail. It's just an absolute classic as far as uh, essential jazz LPs. I would put this in the top 25 ones you need to own if you're starting a collection. Uh, really breaks down the doors as far as the avant-garde. Along with Ornette Coleman, the, those guys around that time, the late Eric Dolphy. Um, wow, the song Straight Up and Down, Out to Lunch, Had and Beard. Um, just great stuff. A lot of stuff in 9-4, 5-4 time signatures. This is a musician's record for sure. This is not something that the cash for really for the casual listener at all. Uh, but um, I, I'm really digging these Blue Note reissues. I've seen some of the VC, but um, I think they're doing a great job of it, making this music accessible to everyone. Just crisp sound, really good stuff. I'm looking forward to more coming out, which I think they have plans for the next year, year and a half. I've reissued these every month. This is one to pick up for sure. This is a kiss, kiss. I can't. I shared one of their records earlier. And I can't. I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, but this is Josh Omi's uh, Nicole Oliveri's band before the Queen of the Stone Age. Kiss, kiss. Uh, this is Welcome to Sky Valley. I think this is their second LP from 1994. This is great. This is sort of stoner hard rock, I would call it Black Sabbath hard rock type stuff. Uh, legendary band from the um, California desert. Killer riffs, killer musicianship. Um, I really like this one. I showed the other one, um, Blues for the Something, and I think I may even like this one better. This is just great. They reissued all four of the band's albums. Um, this is, I think this may be my favorite one. Sky Valley. Uh, just great stuff. I actually prefer this band to Queens of the Stone Age, to be honest with you. Um, it's really not even close. I like some Queens of the Stone Age stuff, but this is really, really good record. Uh, getting to some jazz, ECM. This is John Abercrombie, Dave Holland, Jack DeJohnette, which make up the gateway. This is their debut LP on ECM from 1979. This is a great, great ECM release. Just a trio of, I mean, John Abercrombie, Jack Dijonette, I mean, that's just, doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. This is a really, really good ECM release, um, which I believe they did Gateway 1 and 2, and this band did several releases. I knew this was a good one to get, and it, it I never heard it. It didn't let me down at all. Just, um, just what happens when you get amazing genius musicians in the room get something like this. Great copy of this used for five dollars and it just um, not a skip on it, just send a great. Glad that finally on that one. Um, most of these yeah these next ones are just jazz. Um, Bags and Train, Mill Jackson and John Coltrane from Atlantic. Also got this the same day as that one in the used bin for like seven or eight bucks. Um, wasn't too crazy about this one as far as you know John Coltrane records go although I mean it's obviously collaboration um, but glad to get it just because it's a Coltrane release um, wasn't crazy about Milt Jackson's contribution to this and the instruments he played on it um, but again just cool to have um, the vibra harp yeah it wasn't I wasn't really feeling that too much on this, but uh, I don't know. Cool to have. Um, the next two are Ahmed Jamal. This is Outer Timur Space. This is the second volume of extended performances of the Monterey Jazz Festival in France. Uh, this is really good. This is just basically a trio of Ahmed Jamal, Jamil Suleiman on bass, and Frank Grant on drums. This is extended performances of the song Bogota and Extensions. Just two um, songs from the 1972 festival, I believe, on Impulse. Uh, this is really, really good. I, I love the broken down sound of the trio, Ahmed Jamal Trio, just playing out. I love that cover. It's a great cover, too. Um, really good. 
really, really good. Uh, someone said Ahmed Jamal never played a note too many, and I agree with that. His playing is very minimal, but in a really good way. I really enjoyed this record a lot. One of my one of my favorite Ahmed Jamal releases. This one not so much. So this is Ahmed Jamal seventy three. Um, this is on twentieth century records. I found this for fifty cents. So I'm not going to bitch too much about it. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna leave any Ahmed Jamal for fifty cents. But um, this one is not very good. This is. Um, I believe he's doing like a war cover for the first song, "The World Is a Ghetto." Um, a lot of orchestral instrumentation, which doesn't work for Ahmed Jamal. My point, I, in my opinion, I much rather see the the trio, the broken down sound, as opposed to an orchestra. Uh, did not like this record at all, really. Um, two more. Gary Newman, The Pleasure Principle, also got this in the used bin uh, from 1979. Uh, did, I didn't know Cars was on this one. I thought Cars was on the a different Gary Newman album, but it actually is. And this is a great album. This is just classic post punk synth punk type stuff. Um, everyone knows Gary Newman, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Just a nice, clean copy. Got this for like 10 bucks, and I'm um, just glad to have it. It's uh, interesting stuff. And lastly, uh, filling in the Dylan collection, I'm almost there. I have like three more records I need to fill it all the way in. This is another side of Bob Dylan. This is from 1964, I want to say. This is Bob Dylan's fourth album, right after the times are changing and right before Bring It All Back Home. Uh, this is not a very good Bob Dylan album. It's, it's, it's a very good album, but... Um, I'm, the people that bitched about Dylan going electric, I mean, how much longer could he do something like this at this point? Uh, he made, really, the first album, the solo album was, was really good, but uh, Blowing in the Wind, Times They Were Changing, that sort of took that sound really as far as it could go, and he goes one album further with this, and um, I think going electric on bringing out All Back Home was a good thing, because this, this is not all that good. It's okay, there's, there's some... There's some high points, but this is sort of a low point in the overall Dylan catalog. But again, I'm a Dylan completist, so I want to um, I wanted to have this. So there you go. Um, yeah. So it's good to see everyone, and thanks for watching. Uh, hope to see you all soon.